Hi, hello, namaste. A paradigm shift in education and paradigm shift in assessments. More, lot many new terms in student vocabulary. Proctors, supra proctors, and uh, MCQs. So, lot many new words are added into the student literature, and that is really confusing many of the teachers as well as students and parents also. So, welcome to Lata Smart Thoughts. In today's video, I will be giving few tips on how to approach MCQ preparation and crack MCQ successfully. Two aspects are to be taken into consideration as far as MCQs are considered, the multiple choice questions. One is the preparation part, what we do before attempting the exam. And the second is attempt of the exam. So in today's video, I will be talking about the preparation, the approach for the MCQ questions or the assessments, mode of assessments. Few techniques I will give for preparation that is the reading techniques and memorization techniques that will really help us to prepare well. Many of us think that attempting a MCQ question paper is easy but to be honest it is more tricky when compared to subjective question papers because a overview of subject, a comprehensive study of the subject is much essential and lot much connection or rehearsal that is elaborative rehearsal we call that is very much essential to have the grip or the command over the entire content and only then we can rightly answer the multiple choice questions. I would go with few simple tips. Number one is the association chunking and visualization process. When we are preparing for the examination or generally for the preparation mode, for example, I take a lesson called photosynthesis and biology. Let us make associations, that is, let us use some graphic organizers like mind maps, flow charts, and use some colors and make some association circling or labeling in the textbook or on the notepad what you are using so that this visual images visualization will be there in your brain and also try to visualize a plant a green plant it absorbs sunlight then what happens it is initiating the light reaction followed by dark reaction what are the changes in light reaction what are the changes in dark reaction so when you associate your reading with the live visual process, it has a very strong impact on our memory. Then second is chunking process we call. In chunking process, especially like mathematics or physical sciences or chemistry, where you have lot many numericals, standards, constant values or conversions, the numbers, the digits come into existence. So you make a constant value you need to remember. So what is the value of f pi? What is the value of lambda? So you use the chunking process, divide the numbers. For example, how you remember your telephone numbers. Instead of uh, remembering all the 10 digits at a time, we break into threes and twos and remember, right? Likewise, you remember the values in pieces. For example, a phone number is 9492113678. So we re remember it 94921 or so and so, like that. So that chunking process, splitting and making into memory traces. This very well works for the digits and numbers, the mathematical physics and chemistry, where you have the numbers or the conversions into uh, I mean, mode of study. Then we have the very important technique is the mnemonics, as it's a very familiar, all of us know, and it is a well-proven researchers, many researchers have proven that this is one the best technique to memorize and especially towards the uh, examination point of view, not only the recall or the I mean, uh, re-identify, but even for higher order thinking skills, this will be re important for us to analyze and synthesize our outcomes. So here, mnemonics, for example, very basic example in primary classes when a teacher asks, WebGR, the rainbow, colors in the rainbow, all the first letters of the colors are made into WebGR. And that is how throughout life we remember WebGR. So in mnemonics, we have acronyms and acrostics. Acronyms are 
like vibji or what i told from one keyword of the points we take one letter and we make a word for example you are reading history what are the causes for the 1857 revolt maybe doctrine of lapse poor economic conditions or out annexation of out so doctrine of lapse d poor economic conditions e and out o d e o so d e o could be your acronym for that three causes what is acrostics acrostics or the first letter will make a meaningful sentence for example you have something in chemistry like uh, the periodic classification so what are the trends as move e move in the periods so how is ionization potential let us think so ionization potential it increases so i we keep so i next the f electron affinity may be a so i a so a means electron affinity so affinity with that affinity you will make your meaningful sentence into a notes so that this is called acrostics especially in literature when you are reading poems and literature so this acrostics is very very useful for us and next comes the method of loci we call if you have uh, good fond of reading books good readers sherlock holmes technique was this method of loci that means connecting ourselves to the places or to the spots where we read so where we have taken this knowledge from or where it was from tutor or in the house or in the textbook or from the laptop screen where you have studied this content so that blue corner was there that red index mark was there so you have underlined with the highlighter so like this we recollect the places of study or we connect to the moment of the study and that spotting is called as connections with the loci this is one other technique and we have the personalization technique it is also very very essential for example you are uh, studying something about uh, uh, citric acid cycle let us take in respiration aerobic respiration you take a citric acid cycle so how to recollect that in examination hall so you have the steps of aerobic respiration the glycolysis krebs cycle and the photophosphorylation so glycolysis what happens first visualize the glycolysis krebs cycle when it krebs cycle the pyruvic acid is one person let us think a boy called pyru he is getting associated with acetyl coenzyme his friend and both of them are jumping into the cell and then they are meeting one other fellow called isocitrate so you keep some isocitrins name a good fond name then you have the different acids alpha ketoglutaric acid succinic acid each one one name so you are personalizing the contact personal movement you are giving a personal movement to the topic so that also helps you and uh, lastly we also call it as connective method or the more elaborate context memory method or context reading method this is something we make the content into different chunks and we relate it one topic to other topic and we call this process as a linking or chaining so in this linking or chaining if this chain one part if you remember throughout you will be learning each step and then finally you will have every step into the mind what is a prior step what is a post step so these are some important techniques which you can apply when you are especially preparing for mcqs so these techniques of reading in short span you will have the flows with your hand on the hand notes and before the examination also it is easy for you to revise and that would definitely help you to come with the most efficient way to attempt the examination in my next video i'll be giving you some tips on how to attempt the exam that is while you are doing the exam what points should be kept in mind a uh, mind if you like the video please subscribe and like and share it thank you